question number six. In this question, the rocket has a mass 2 into 10 to the power 4 kg of which half is fuel. Assuming that the fuel is burnt at a constant rate and there is a constant thrust of 5 into 10 to the power 6 newton, we have to neglect air resistance and the airy variation in the acceleration due to gravity. The acceleration at the instant where the whole fuel is consumed is something that we have to find out. The student, when the fuel is completely exhausted, the remaining mass m can be written as the initial mass 2 into 10 to the power 4 minus the half mass that is the fuel mass. So this will be 1 into 10 to the power 4 kg that is the remaining mass. The force on the rocket will be equal to the thrust that is 5 into 10 to the power 6 minus the gravity that is mg which will be equal to mass 1 into 10 to the power 4 multiplied by gravity's acceleration that is 10. So this will be equal to 49 into 10 to the power 5 newton. The acceleration will be simply force by mass and if you substitute the values this will be 49 into 10 to the power 5 divided by 1 into 10 to the power 4 giving us a value of 490 meter per second square. And hence for this question the correct answer is option number 3. Now let us move to the question number 7. In this question a body starts sliding down an inclined plane of inclination 30 degree. The top 1 by 4th of the incline is smooth and the lower is rough. The ratio of the force of the friction and the weight of the body if the body is brought to rest just when it reaches the bottom is. The student, the concept here is the work energy theorem that is the net work done by all the forces will be equal to the change in kinetic energy. Since the body starts sliding and finally it comes to rest, the change in kinetic energy will be zero. The work done by the gravity will be equal to mgh where h is the vertical height and the work done by the friction will be equal to minus f into 3 by 4 of L where L is the length of the inclined plane, 3 by 4 is the frictional part of the inclined plane. From this we can write down that f by mg will be equal to 4 by 3 h by L. Now if we draw a diagram, this is the h and this is the L and if this is the angle theta, h by L will be equal to sin theta. So this will be 4 by 3 into sin 30 as theta is given as 30. So this will be equal to 2 by 3. And hence dear student for this question the correct answer is option number 3. Moving on to the question number 8. In question 8 a train has to negotiate a curve of 400 meters. By how much should the outer rail be raised with respect to the inner rail for a speed of 72 kilometers per hour if the distance between the rail is 1.5 meters. Dear student if we draw a diagram let this be the inner rail and then let this be the outer rail and let this be the height h. If this is the length L, then h by L will be equal to V square by Rg that is the required angle of banking. From this V can be written as h by L into Rg root. So from this it is also given that the speed is 72 km per hour which will be equal to 20 meter per second. On substituting the value of v as this, g as 10 meter per second square, on substituting the further values that is the value of r as 400 meters, we can clearly calculate the value of h and h turns out to be equal to 0 0.15 meters or 15 centimeters. And hence for this question the correct answer is option number 4. Moving on to the question number 9. In question 9, a railway engine weighing 40 metric ton is traveling along a level track at a speed of 54 km per hour. This student, the speed is given as 54 km per hour which will be equal to 15 meter per second. We will be using these values as we proceed with the solution. Now the power this student is given as the dot product of force and velocity. Here the mass is given as 40 into 10 to the power 3 kg and sin theta is given as 1 by 49 meaning that cos theta will be equal to under root of 1 minus sin square theta which will be approximately equal to 1. Now the power required on the level track will be equal to mu mg that is the frictional force multiplied by the velocity and the power required to move up an inclined plane that is p2 will be equal to mg sin theta plus mu mg cos theta into v. So the additional power this student can be written as p2 minus p1 
that will be equal to mg sin theta plus mu mg cos theta minus mu mg into v. Now all we need to do is substitute the given values and as we substitute the values we get a value of 120 kilowatt. Meaning that for this question the correct answer is option number 4. Moving on to the question number 10. Question 10 says a light rope fixed at one end to the wooden clamp on the ground passes over a frictionless pulley and hangs on the other side. The rope makes an angle of 30 degree with the ground and the wooden clamp comes out of the ground if an upward force greater than 360 Newton acts on it. The maximum acceleration of a 60 kg man in upward direction so he can climb safely is. This one, let us draw a diagram to understand the situation. If C is the clamp, then this is the string, this being the pulley, this is the man. Now it is given that this particular angle is 30 degrees and if this is the tension T, the vertical component of the tension will be T sin 30 degree. The vertical component of the tension should not exceed 360 Newton. Therefore the maximum value of tension can be calculated using T sin theta that is T sin 30 is equal to 360 or T is equal to 720 Newton. If A is the upward acceleration, the tension will be equal to M into G plus A, which will be equal to 720 equal to 60 into 10 plus A. And from this equation, A turns out to be equal to 2 meter per second square. Meaning that for this question, the correct answer is option number 